Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we are doing a first example on pure bending of reinforced concrete. So if you saw the last video, we went over the method on how to solve this type of problem. And in this video, we're following that exact same method, except now we just have some actual uh, geometry and numbers here. And what we want to do is we want to work through this problem. We want to figure out where the neutral axis is. And then we want to figure out the moment of inertia of the cross section of the transformed cross section after we transform the steel. And, uh, and then from there, we're going to uh, we're going to calculate the max stress that develops in the concrete, which is going to be compressive stress, and then the max stress that develops in the steel, which is going to be our tensile stress. So to get started, if you remember from the last video, first we need our, our ratio here with, that we call N, so ES over EC. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be transforming the, uh, the steel rods here into... Uh, an equivalent area of a modulus of elasticity that matches the concrete. So that's 200 over 25. That ratio n is equal to 8. Okay, so then we know that we want to transform this to an area that's NAS. And uh, AS is going to be basically, first That's first we need the area of steel. So that is, uh, there's 4 rods in there times pi r squared. Right, and that will give us a total area of steel. So we have 4 times pi times the radius is 11 millimeters squared. And uh, that gives us, uh, that, that works out to about 4 times 380. And uh, that's going to, we're just going to round that to uh, 1520 millimeters squared. So what we want to do is we, we want to draw the transformed section. Uh, so Again, if you remember from the last video, we would be tempted to expand out the steel, which is about right there, uh, just to an area of NAS uh, that is just going to create this compound uh, or composite shape where this would all have the same modulus of elasticity. Um, and then there is this, uh, we know the neutral axis is somewhere in here, uh, just we'll just arbitrarily draw it on like that. So that's our neutral axis. Maybe I'll clean that up, neutral axis. Um, but if you remember from the last video, we were saying that concrete is just comparatively really, really weak in tension. And uh, so anything that's above the neutral axis and pure bending is going to be in compression. Anything that's below the neutral axis is going to be in tension. But concrete is just, uh, what we do is we just assume that it's not carrying any tension. So what we do is we really, we just get rid of the concrete. We just basically pretend it's not there. And we're going to assign all of the tensile load into the, uh, the steel rods here. So let's just finish up erasing all of that. And basically what we're left with is uh, a transformed shape that just looks like this. So we can draw on some, uh, some dimensions still. Uh, so this dimension here is still uh, D. And uh, D we had uh, 450 millimeters. 450 millimeters. Um, we still have B here. So like that. Uh, B was 250 millimeters. Uh, this distance from the top to the neutral axis, we call this X. And then uh, for the centroid, which is going to be important for us, because this is a rectangle, we know that the centroid will be located at a distance of X over 2 from the neutral axis. And then from the neutral axis down basically to the center of this transformed area, uh, this is D minus X, uh, which is equal to 450 millimeters minus X. And really, we want to just be solving for what is X. Um, and then lastly, the area here, um, the area of this transformed bit is just N a S and uh, N was 8, A S was 15, 20 millimeters squared. And so the area that we're dealing with here is uh, 8 times 15, 20, that is 12,160 millimeters squared. Whereas the area up here is, uh, well, we actually don't know, it's X times 250 millimeters. So we want to find out what the value is for x. 
And we know that everything above the neutral axis when we have a positive bending moment like this is in compression and everything below the neutral axis here is in tension. And uh, those are basically going to cancel each other out. So if we think about all of the stress, the compressive stress that's going on up here in this area, and basically uh, just consider the moment that that's going to cause through the centroid of this shape about the neutral axis, that basically just has to cancel out the, the tension, the, the moment that's being caused by you know, the, the stress that's acting on this area uh, and the, the distance away from the neutral axis as well. So we want to figure out what those are. So we need the area times the distance from the centroid to the neutral axis. So for area, we have x times 250 millimeters times, you know, I'm going to just drop the units, it'll be just easier to write, um, times x over 2. All right, and this has to be equal and opposite to, so we can either say this is equal to the stuff on the bottom, or we can just put a minus there and set it equal to 0, uh, where we have this area, which was 12,160 millimeters squared um, times d minus x, and actually we know what d is, it is 400 and 50 millimeters minus x millimeters, and set that all equal to zero. So we can just clean this up a little bit. So we'll have one half times 250 x squared minus 12, 160 uh, times 450 minus x. I guess I didn't really need to write that whole line out again. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, I'll clean this up again and we'll see that this is basically a quadratic. So we have uh, one half, that's uh, 125 x squared plus uh, 12,160 12, x minus 5,472,000 uh, and that's all equal to zero. So if you're doing homework, basically all you need to do is just plug this into Wolfram, but if you're on a test, you gotta use the quadratic equation, and we'll find our roots are negative 263 millimeters or 166 millimeters. And clearly the dimension that is the correct one would be 166 millimeters. It's not gonna be the negative value. So we have just found that x is equal to 166 millimeters, which means our neutral axis is just 166 millimeters from the top there. Well, that's good because now that gives us enough information that we can continue on and uh, solve for the moment of inertia of the transformed shape. So for that, the moment of inertia of the transformed shape, we are going to have, uh, this will be one third base height. Well, actually let's use the, so it'll be B times X, B times X cubed. Um, so it'll be this plus uh, NAS, and uh, if you remember from the last video, we did reason our way through this times D minus X. Basically, it's the sum of the moment of inertia of this part about the neutral axis and this part about the neutral axis. Uh, for one-third BX cubed, you can find this in the back of uh, your Mechanics of Material textbook. Basically, it's the moment of inertia of a rectangle about an axis where the axis is on one end of it. And this part is, uh, NAS is the area of this transformed area, uh, and D minus X is the distance from the neutral axis to the center of it. And because we don't actually really define the actual geometry of this shape, we just care about the actual area of it. Uh, this kind of comes from the, new, uh, the parallel axis theorem where we had uh, uh, that, that um, radius of gyration, it was like, a D squared. Well, basically this part here is the A from that expression, and this part here was D squared. And because we don't actually care, we don't really say what height or width this is, uh, we don't have to take into consideration its actual geometry. So the uh, moment of inertia of the transformed area is the combination of the effect of this part and the effect of this part. All right. Um, so let's go ahead. We actually have all of these values here. So let's switch back to blue. Um, we have one third B was uh, 250 millimeters. And X was, uh, we just calculated that at 160 
Uh, no, it's 166. Why did I write it like that? 166. There we go. Um, uh, here we are, blue. So times 166 millimeters, that's all to the power of 3, plus NAS is 12... 160. That's millimeters squared. And D minus X, uh, that is 450 millimeters minus 166 millimeters. All right. Um, so when we simplify that, we're going to get 13. Plug that in the calculator, we get 13, 833 millimeters, uh, that's millimeters to the power of 4, plus 3,453,440 millimeters to the power of 4, and then we're going to find that our moment of inertia for the whole thing is basically just 3.467 times 10 uh, to the power of 6 millimeters for, and that's also equivalent to 3.467 times 10 to the negative 6 meters to the power of 4. Cool, so now what we can do is we can take that number and we can use it to calculate our max stress in the concrete with the expression uh, max stress in concrete is equal to mc over i. mc over i. All right, so if we go back up and check, we had our moment was 200, 200 newton meters, and c, in this case, the distance from the neutral axis to the extreme fiber is going to be equal to x, which was 166 millimeters. So we get 200 newton meters times uh, 0.166 meters over this guy which was 3.467 times 10 to the minus 6 meters 4. There's 4 meters on the bottom, 2 on the top, so we're going to be left with units of newtons per meter squared. Um, and if we do this in the calculator we get 9.58 times 10 to the 6. Yeah, there we go, newtons per meter squared. And 10 to the 6 newtons per meter squared is just the same as 9 point, uh, we'll just round that, 9.6 megapascals. All right, so that is the max compressive stress that's happening in the concrete, and that's basically right up here at the very top of the cross-section. All right, so the next thing that we'll do to finish up the problem is we're just going to find the max stress in the steel with the expression uh, sigma max for steel is equal to, well this is the transformed section that we're looking at, the steel is right here, and we did tamper with that area, so we're going to have to bring in again that factor n uh, times basically the same expression mc over i. And the reason we bring in n again is because we went from an area of 15-20 millimeters squared and we actually increased the area of the transformed section by 8, and because uh, stress is force per area, if we increase the area by a factor of n, which in this case is 8 times, then basically we're, if we did this calculation, we would, uh, without the n, we would just get a, a number that's uh, 8 times too small. So we just bring back in that factor to get us to the actual real life scenario uh, where we have 8 times as little area that we're working with. Okay, so we have 8 times, uh, this is again, this is 200. Newton meters times, in this case, C. Let's look at C here. The, the C value that we're working with is D minus X, and that was 450 minus 166, and uh, that is actually 284 millimeters. So we're going to bring in 0 0.284 meters, and then we'll have the same moment of inertia down here, so 4, 6, 7 times 10 to the negative 6 meters to the power of 4. That gives us again units times 10 to the negative, or times 10 to the 6 newtons per meter squared. That is 131 times 10 to the 6 newtons per meter squared. Uh, and we convert that into megapascals. That is just basically the same thing as 131 megapascals. So there we go. 
uh, we found the max compressive stress in the member, which is the, the max stress in concrete. We found the max tensile stress in the member, which is the max stress in the steel. Um, and, uh, and we did that by following the method outlined in a previous video on how to solve problems for pure bending of reinforced concrete.